Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, depending on where you might be joining us from in the world today. My name is Meg Alexander. I am part of Power to Fly's hosting team, and I am incredibly excited, as always, uh, to be jumpstarting us uh, and jumpstarting our week with this fabulous chat and learn event. Now, before we dive into questions and kind of get into the meat and potatoes of today's event, I just want to go over a couple of quick housekeeping items. Um, hopefully these will be helpful to you, whether this is your 50th Power to Fly event or your first. Um, so all of our virtual events are about you. So we want to make sure that you are as able to participate as you would like to. You can do that in a couple different ways. Um, you can turn your cameras on if you would like to share your smiling, maskless faces with us safely. Believe me, there is no pressure to be Instagram perfect. I think I'm on day four of dry shampoo and messy bun, uh, you know, rocking my cleanest t-shirt for y'all today, you know, obviously stepping up and stepping out. But all of this to mean that, you know, if you are coming to us from let's say your kitchen table or your couch in your living room, or if you are in a corner office, it does not matter. You get to meet us wherever you are today. Um, please understand that if you have any security or, uh, or privacy concerns, completely understood. If you don't come off mute during today's event, you will not show up. So that should help, uh, you know, help if you kind of have any, um, any privacy issues you might be dealing with. But just understand that having your camera on is not required. So if you rather just kind of sit back in anonymity with us, completely fine, do not worry about it. Now you can always participate in other ways as well. If you would like to ask a question or send in a comment, let us know how you're feeling about what we're talking about today. Please, please feel free to do that in the group chat in Zoom. If you have any sort of uh, question that you would like me to ask but you want to be kept anonymous, absolutely wonderful, love to help you out with that. So all you need to do is DM your question or comment to me, Meg Alexander, you'll find my name in the drop down menu in the Zoom group chat feature. Now, like I said, you are welcome to ask questions, add comments, um, please, please feel free, let us know how you are feeling about this. Just know that you are also welcome if you would like um, to uh, share social media or share um, pictures or video, you know, take pictures or video as we go. You are welcome to share that out to your social media network so that way people can know that you are learning and growing with Power to Fly. Um, if you do want to tag us, we are at Power to Fly on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Um, and you are welcome to do that. We would love to share, retrare, retweet, repost, whatever else you guys share about us. So please, please feel free. Um, you know, anything we can do to grow the, the community and grow the reach of this platform so that more people can get these resources for free, the better. Um, so absolutely, please feel free to take, uh, you know, take us up on that. We would love to, uh, to share out on social with all of you. Um, now, like I said earlier, today's session is being recorded. Now, what that means for you is that you do not need to feel like you are pressured to do anything but sit back and relax. You don't have to take notes. You don't have to worry if you missed a reference that someone made or if you, um, you know, didn't quite grab that link. They will. Be, all of this information is going to be available for you to review. So after today's event concludes in about one to two business days, y'all are going to get an email from us to where you can rewatch this recording once we post it on our website. So once that goes up, like I said, everybody's going to get that email, whether you joined us today or not. Um, so you'll always be able to, to head back and check that out. Um, once it goes live on our website, we also post it to our YouTube channel. So you can always check out there um, and uh, share tweet or sorry, share or rewatch uh, any of our videos posted there. Uh, but we have a huge selection of our past archives as well that you can search on our YouTube channel as well as on our website. So I definitely recommend that you take advantage of uh, being able to rewatch this recording as well as check out and watch even more all for free. So I'm very excited to introduce you to today's speaker. So we have joining us today, let me see if I've got my screenshot, there we go. So joining us today is Dr. Crystal Rose. Now, Dr. Rose is an award-winning educator, scientist, academic lecturer, producer, curricula curator, and educational program designer. Now, Dr. Rose has international expertise in broad sectors from medicine, research, and academia into media productions industry, where she was recently awarded an Emmy. Now, Dr. Rose's cutting edge in initiatives have launched today's top young leaders featured in Forbes 30 Under 30 and Times Best 2021, including our current poet laureate, Amanda Gorman, who, if you have not read her book, is absolutely fabulous. Please check it out. Oh, woman has a way with words. Uh, so we'll discuss our love of Amanda later. Sorry, Dr. Rose didn't mean to, uh, to sidetrack us there. Now, since uh, Dr. Rose completed her MD, PhD at the University of Heidelberg and Harvard Medical School, uh, Dr. Rose has worked with over 400 colleagues and, or sorry, colleges and universities. 
She currently hosts the new TV show, TUN TV, where she interviews thought leaders from various sectors. Dr. Rose, we are so incredibly happy to have you join us today. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our audience uh, before we dive on into questions? Happy to be here today. Excellent. All right, last but not least, before we dive on into questions, um, something I want to share with y'all today. These are some of the takeaways that you can expect to get from today's event. Now, especially helpful, maybe if you registered a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, or if you are just finding your way to this video now, hi, from the past to our future viewers, uh, this is going to give you an idea of what we're going to cover. Now, just understand that since you joined us for the, uh, the live recording, right, you took time out of your day to be here with us, um, we want to make sure that you get the most benefit out of that. So, if we are discussing something today and you want us to dive in deeper or expand on a topic or on a term, let us know in that group chat. You have the power to drive the conversation today. So we're going to try and get to these things, but just know like, you know, if we're going over one of your questions and you are, uh, you know, want to give us more detail or more context, let us know, share it into that group chat there. Um, if you asked a question at registration and you're not sure if we're going to be able to get to it, ask it again in the chat. I want to make sure that we prioritize everybody who's here. So please, please feel free. I'll let us know what you want to know so, because I can't get you answers if I don't know where the curiosity lies. So we're going to discuss some of the advantages you can uh, take, sorry, some of the advantages to be had um, from demonstrating your thought leadership within your own field. We're going to discuss some of those ways that you can demonstrate that thought leadership, you know, ways to get your ideas out into that industry or community. And we're also going to discuss some strategies to build up your brand and demonstrate that leadership and where that can come from. So um, Dr. Rose, to get us started, we had a question that got asked a lot today. Um, one of the, the, the first ones was people asking if you can help us kind of define thought leadership. So when we're talking about this concept, what are you talking about specifically? I love opening up with that question and I'm going to add it to an analogy. Who here, you can put a yes or, you know, or a no in the chat, who here loves music? Can I see some answers? Who here makes music? Wow. Who here loves art? Who here makes art? And now I want us to start off by playing a little bit of Vivaldi Summer. And so we often don't approach these questions about what is better, making music, making art, listening, and appreciating, right? Because none of those we'd say are better because one inspires the other and it inspires us to dream. And so dreaming is a really good place to start with that conversation of thought leadership because there are parallels between our hopes, our thoughts, and our dreams. And I'm excited to join you, you know, to talk about thought leadership and its application to your career. The advantages of demonstrating your thought leadership is really about being in the nexus of what I like to call hope. And today, you know, it'll be good. I have a couple of mnemonic devices acronyms to help you remember that. So hope is like, what is thought leadership? It's a higher calling. If you feel like you have something to share that is bigger than a single person and it really comes from abundance mindset a generous mindset an awareness that there is something to solve O for organizing it's organizing in nature towards something that's really positive what you have what you intend to build you're building towards making something better and then the p stands for people or the community giving back it's a way to give back. It's really the embodiment of what we think of a student or a servant leader. And then E for education and endeavor, because you are going to learn and continue to learn and research about it, whatever thought leadership capacity it may be, and you will endeavor towards a goal, an experience or knowledge and that you've accumulated. And so really, I say that thought leadership is at the nexus of hope. I love that. Ooh, absolutely love that. Okay. 
So if we are talking about thought leadership, then let's take this a step further, like kind of take a step back in that, that chicken before the egg dynamic and talk about what a thought leader is. A thought leader really is someone who expresses, right, using interpersonal skills and, and ideas, they display an expertise in what I call fits. That's the field or focus, industry or interest, T for topics and S for sector or subject. So a thought leader expresses their ideas in a certain area of expertise. That's a good one. I mean, that's kind of something to think on. And I like the idea that, you know, much like the idea of being a, like a musician or an artist, you know, it really is more of an internal designation, right? You don't have to have other people recognize you as such to be doing work in that, in that area or in that field. Um, so I very, very, I very much appreciate that this is more of a proactive designation rather than a passive one. Um, let's talk about why it's important to demonstrate thought leadership. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of people have maybe opinions on how things could be different or could be changed, um, but they don't always share it with other people. So let's, let's talk about why it's important to demonstrate it. Good question. And I feel like I have to answer that in the context of, you know, accelerating your career. Well, first of all, thought leadership really helps you to develop a wealth of transferable skills, that will catapult you and help you become your best self, um, create a meaningful network, and then have impact. In turn, this inspires others uh, to hope, have a higher calling, to organize, to focus on people and community to learn even more about that field. Ooh, okay, I'm very much liking this. All right, so let's talk about how thought leadership benefits us. So we've talked a little bit about, you know, what, what that means and what you're kind of putting out into the world, but what are you gaining back in, you know, kind of like uh, in trade for that? Oh gosh, really good questions. First of all, thank you everyone who submitted questions up front. I want to say they're all were, were wonderful. And this one just, you know, comes at the right time. Well, how does it benefit us? We can also approach that by saying, we know there are benefits, but why wouldn't you do something that would benefit you, right? If you have something to share, that's a particular fit, right? That's the field or interest or topic, then it helps you develop your interpersonal skills. It helps you to develop your intrapersonal skills, right? And we can talk about that later. And it helps you to develop your supra personal skills. And these are, you know, they're transferable. You can use them in a variety of other ways, contexts, jobs, and it really expands the ability to, to really be who you can be your very best self. Um, so when I said interpersonal skills, there's, you know, we talk about the four general types, right? There's the, the reading and the writing, the, you know, both same side, you know, different sides of the same coin. There's verbal, there's listening and learning, and they're nonverbal as well. And all of these are really important. And so, you know, a lot of people are, can be surprised that thought leadership, the listening part, is a really important part, or the verbal part can or cannot be, depending on who that is. And then the last one, uh, the next one, sort of looking at the intrapersonal skills, I like to talk about the ABCDs of intrapersonal skills. A for awareness, mostly self-awareness, because if you are not so self-aware, it's hard to be aware of others. And so that leads way to empathy, right? In a way, going a little bit and above just yourself. But B, you become more confident and more independent, which sounds a little counterintuitive because, you know, no person is an island. However, rely on the work and research and the connections you do to make informed opinions. And then the next one are the 10 C's. We know the seven C's, right? But these are the 10 C's, I like to call this, of soft skills, starting with creativity, collaboration, curiosity, and passion, critical thinking, computational learning, that's the whole data piece of it, compassion, right, comprehensive, thinking or an open mindset, which leads us to cross 
cultural connections, really transcending connections that allow us to see the commonalities of the human experiences. And then that leads way to cultural IQ and EQ, right? Understanding what the community needs, who the community is, to be more inclusive and to be more aware about belonging. And then creative problem solving, which is, you know, very, very important now. And then the Ds, now going into the Ds, A, B, C, Ds, those were the 10 Cs, developing further skills. So researching, you know, and educating yourself on things perhaps that are not taught in schools, things that you didn't know. Perhaps if your target group, for example, includes a community that speaks another language or ASL, then you might need to broaden your own skill set. And so I like to call that the, the ABCDs of interpersonal skills. The last one I'd say is a super personal development as a benefit, because at that point, super means it goes beyond you, right? And so you're able to have impact on the field, on a community, you create a network, and we all know how you know expanded networks, accelerated opportunities, and and the team me. And that's another whole point that we can talk about, but it's really important out there to have a team me. And those are people that surround you, people that will help you. And, you know, sometimes unless you're doing what you love, you may not come in contact or attract the type of people who might be kindred spirits. And so my sort of mnemonic device around team me is you want to have a smile around you. You want to have an ally, uh, someone to amplify your voice, to advocate for you or an angel, right? Someone who doesn't, who, who you may not have said what it is you need. You may not even know what you need, but that person will come right around. You want that. So that's an, a smile. So S for someone out there, important someone who can champion you someone who can coach or consult with you, and it could even be your therapist. M for mentor or muse, someone out there who um, for now and, and for the future can help you navigate the difficult situations, and a muse, someone who can inspire you. And I for integrity, you want someone out there who can tell you and have heart-to-heart -heart truth with you, can tell you the truth. And so um, having that person in your life is important. And L for leader or teacher, you know, on whose shoulders you stand, and that's part of the humility part of it, who goes before you, helps perhaps guide you, perhaps it's even, you know, it doesn't have to be in person, it could be from afar. And then E is really about the everyday support. Those are the family, friends who'll just love you for you unconditionally, and they may be other members of your team A we just talked about, right? But yeah, and they may not even be experts in the field, um, but they support you and, you know, they're there, they have your back. And uh, sometimes, you know, you may not have been born into a family like that, but you, you can find them through this way. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. I've, I've uh, heard other people talk about this idea as um, gathering your own personal board of directors. Um, I, I, which I kind of love, right? Because you have this, if, I mean, if you think about a board of directors, not everybody's not doing the same thing, right? They're all there because they kind of fill different roles to keep that org running. But I think it, I, think I love your, your smile designation because I think that could be a lot more helpful, especially for people that might have to choose these, you know, this group for themselves. Um, I think there are a lot of people that are lucky enough to be born into situations where they have this support, but if you weren't born into it, it's okay. You get to pick the people that you get to have on your team. Um, and that, that can honestly be even more valuable than being born with them. Cause sometimes you might have to fire somebody and it's a lot easier to do that when you're not related to them. Right. Well, you put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay. So we've talked about how ways that that thought leadership can benefit us. What impact can it have on other people if we are out there, you know, sharing our ideas and trying to, to um, you know, think long-term about, you know, impacts of our industry? Um, you know, what, what can that, what impact can that have on the people around us? Absolutely. You know, when you're out there with a certain area of thought leadership, you are paving the way, not just, you know, for yourself, but even for other thought leaders. 
And we think about like the civil rights movement or leaps in medicine and technology. Thought leadership really has opened the doors for innovation and growth. And you know, you prepare people's mind for what is to come and what's needed. And you're setting that example when you're paving a way and when you, you know, demonstrate your leadership, you set an example and you inspire others to have, as we called, you know, before hope, um, <laughs> which is, you know, we talked about having a higher calling and, and organizing around people and um, continuing to learn about a certain area in the field. Sorry, I lost my mute button there for a second. I think that's absolutely wonderful. Um, okay, so let's talk about some of the ways you can demonstrate thought leadership when it comes to your field. Now, do you think this changes based on you know the industry that somebody might be in? Um, and if so, like maybe let's talk about what those changes would mean. So for, to, be, to start us off, what are some of the ways that we can demonstrate thought leadership within our own field? You know, I, I like that question because it really opens the whole spectrum of what thought leadership is and it really shows us how accessible it is. You can literally, <laughs> you can literally do this, you know, directly or indirectly. Uh, there, there's a whole continuum of thought leadership and there's no one right way to do and to do it. So, you know, the, so I, I like to just sort of leave it there. You can do it directly. You can be the person or you can do it indirectly. Maybe you're someone else's part of someone else's teammate. All right. So what do you think that it takes internally to, for someone to be a thought leader? Um, you know, are there certain things that we need to, you know, goals that we need to hit or certain um, like tasks that have to happen, skills that you have to have before you can be considered a thought leader? That is also a really good point because you think about a thought leader and the first thing that comes to your mind is someone who has expertise, for example, an engineer, right, who finds a gap in their field. But a thought leader can also be someone who has experience, right, who can come in from, you know, perhaps a customer who's using a tool and finds, wow, this is not accessible. So then they work to expand the field. Or sometimes a thought leader is both. It's someone who has both expertise and experience. And, you know, I'm thinking about a young MIT Media Lab thought leader, Joy Abulam Winnie. And, you know, she found out that she was working with AI systems and was unable to track her face because she's a woman of color. And, you know, but as an engineer, she was able to do something about it. And so I think it's that combination. But then there's the other type of thought leaders and thought leadership, which I believe is equally as valuable, the people that gathered around her, again, being someone else's, part of someone else's team me, and highlighting and bringing that up the front, whether they're journalists, whether they're other um, educators, whether they're other scientists that also work on behalf to achieve a greater vision and a greater goal. Okay. So let's say somebody is sitting in our audience today and as they're listening to you speak, they're, they keep thinking, I want to do this. I want to be a thought leader. Where should someone start if this is, you know, their jumping off point? You know, if this is maybe not something they've been thinking about for a while, but now they see that this might be possible because of today's session. Um, where should people start? Well, I, I like that question because it's very tangible. You know, you know, thought leadership does take dedication and commitment and, you know, it does take a willingness to sacrifice, you know, their time, energy to solve sometimes the unsolvable or the not yet solved and forging for that greater good. So it's, you know, you need patience with an eye for progress. Um, and I like to call the steps to be a thought leader. Um, I use an ABCs of that. Um, a, analyze the areas of your fits, right? Your focus, your, your industry, your topic or your subject where do you want to grow or where do you want to share something then b is you want to back away from specific agendas you know really learn for the for the goal of that area that you're exploring and then c for caring deeply this you do want this to be an area that you love that you're passionate about um, because that will help you and drive you to overcome some of the challenges which we all will face, right? 
uh, when you are embarking on a new endeavor, a new journey. And then D for deeply engage. You know, you want to connect to the communities. You are, this is the aspect of creating community, making, being a part of the community. And then the E is for educating yourself in ways to learn as much as you possibly can. And so that you're able to be a creative problem solver and find solutions. And then G for gearing up. You know, you want to have all the pieces you need to fulfill your strategy for thought leadership. And the H is, well, how to do it, right? There are various ways we talked about directly or indirectly, indirectly being someone else's team lead. And there's ways to do that, you know, again, or you can do it directly. You're your own team lead. And having those people or, you know, over time creating that whether it's in person or virtual, you know, we are, you know, in COVID, post COVID. And so, you know, there's so many different ways, even, you know, promoting or, or liking something on, on the, you know, internet or on whatever sort of platform that you, you vibe with, you know, you, you can support people, find other ways to get the, the word out there. If you're starring in your own team, me, you know, you definitely want to have a plan. You want to activate that plan. No person, again, is an island. And yes, yeah, so you can really start getting that out there with the, that A, B, C, D, E, you know, F, G, H uh, strategy. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Now we had two other questions that came in and I, I want to try and deal with both, but I'm going to reverse them in the order they came in. Um, people had asked both how to highlight their thought leadership as well as how to demonstrate their thought leadership. And when I read these, I kind of saw them as demonstrating their thought leadership being the thing that happens in the moment and highlighting your thought leadership might be maybe talking about things after you've shared them. Um, you know, if you've written a post about it or, you know, uh, been instrumental in a project. Is that the right, you know, is, is, that, is that how you also saw these questions or do you have a different understanding of it? I like that question because it makes me think, you know, it's almost like asking, what does it take to go viral, right? You know, and there's no one way. It's an expertise, is it experience, is it both? You know, does a person able to teach have a certain pedagogy or a way that they approach, you know, is it their team knee or are they, are, you know, a part of someone's team knee? But I really think it comes down to how do you translate your thought leadership aspects for the general audience that can be really important because you know sometimes if not things can re really remain you know not not accessible and if there's no translation and there's no emotional connection it can remain elusive in that way and so even if the thought leadership is brilliant so um, I, I do think there's some connection point that we're getting at so when it comes to those ways that we can, we can highlight our thought leadership, I have a problem with this. I feel like a lot of people probably do as well, where talking about myself and about my accomplishments feels very weird, right? It feels like bragging. It feels somehow like inappropriate or rude or selfish, whatever. So let's, let's kind of break that down a little bit. When it comes to highlighting your thought leadership, we're talking about, about telling people about it, right? We're talking about making it known. Um, what are some ways that people can do that, especially if they are from a similar kind of, you know, uh, starting point where it feels really weird to talk about yourself or talk about things that you've done? I like that question because it reminds me of a young, a young indigenous woman, G. Batista. We heard a lot of people talking about climate change, and it wasn't until she started talking about how climate change affects her and her daily life you know, that it started picking up similar, you know, to Greta uh, Thunberg, right? Uh, it's, it's a very similar thing. And so, you know, you have to figure out what is it right for you? You know, if you're in the sciences, you have to know how can you translate this to general audiences? You know, maybe, you know, you don't want to dumb it down, um, but you do want to take the time to make it relatable, understandable. While it still has its brilliance, you still want it to be, you know, have all the shiny pieces that it originally came in. And so one of the things that um, I have a mnemonic device for this, it takes space. It takes space 
for your thought leadership to shine. That's S for strategy, T for tactics, what sort of measures or platforms are you going to use? It takes A, an analytical approach. So you want to be data informed, right? Because you want to make, you know, smart, educated decisions. It also takes the C for being curious and caring. You want to be passionate about this. And then an E for education, continue to research, continue to translate it for people and to connect with greater communities for this. So at the same time, you know, asking what does it take to highlight, you know, or establish a thought leadership, you know, we can also perhaps debunk some myths while we're at it and explore what it doesn't take. It doesn't take someone to be extra talented. It doesn't take anyone to be chosen. Something, it doesn't take something you're not. There's no one way how to be a thought leader or way a thought leader looks. And thought leader isn't talking points um, or somebody else's talking points. Just because someone else is doing something, it's, so it's not a trend. It doesn't have to be perfect. And there's no perfect timing for this. You know, I think the takeaway how thought leadership needs space and the debunking of those myths, what I take away from that is the trying part, the starting on this journey is enough. And so it really is a journey of making the most out of yourself while helping others be the best versions of themselves as well. Ooh, I like that. I want to sit in that for a minute because I think that's something that gets lost, especially, you know, especially in at least like American business culture. It's not about bringing everybody with you. It's about showing off by getting yours. Um, and you don't really think about the secondary aspects of it. There's a lot of people that, that, you know, kind of, that do play out that like that, right? Like they make themselves better and in, in return or along with it, it happens to make everybody else better as well. Um, but there are also plenty of people that don't really care about that second part. And as long as the first part's getting hit, then we're good. Um, and it really, I can tell you that absolutely resonated with the audience. Um, Lisa had, had shared in the chat here. Um, I love the expansive definition of thought leadership as a kind of team sport where a group of folks move towards a goal together. Um, and I think I also very, I want to say a huge thank you, Dr. Rose, for highlighting that it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be the end all be all expert. Good, like good ideas and like good, you know, good uh, processes and changes and stuff can come from anywhere. Um, and that honestly, it brings us to another question that this person had asked, at what point in your career should you consider thought leadership? So when I read this, I kind of heard it as like, well, I haven't hit that five year mark, like, and five years is when then you can, you know, then you're eligible to think about maybe you want to be a thought leader. So let's talk about this. Like, is, is there a point that, that you shouldn't be thinking about these things? Like, is it something that should wait until you're at a certain stage of, of your career, of your job at, you know, role, in, you know, within your org? Like, what, what do you think about this? And that I think is a good question. But it also is a question that I think keeps a lot of people out. And I'd like to use an analogy. I'm going to play now this time also from Vivaldi, but this is the spring. And how many people are familiar with Vivaldi's four seasons? You can put a Y in the chat if you are. Okay. Yeah, we got a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. So it, it seems to be known. and. I'll play this and I'll share my analogy with that. So we know how that points out. Listen to how the summer starts off. So we just went from, you know, this chorus and, and this orchestra and all this beautiful music. And that to me is kind of like an expert. But did we hear that for the summer, how it starts off with just a few notes, right? Were those valuable? Should he have left them out because they were simple? And I think that answers our question. I think that because thought leadership is an act of stewardship of your own mind, 
There's no right or wrong time. And so again, you know, there's a top, you know, some people say there's a top for every pot. <laughs> and I like that because it's, it's fitting, you know, and you know, what you experience, what you know might really help someone else. That's yeah. the point. Do you have something to share? Can you, you know, is it organized around a community or helping people or helping to solve a problem? And, you know, are you excited about it? Are you excited to learn more? So again, it's about, you know, the hope element of thought. Yeah. Making. I like that. I think that that's, that's really great. You know, we have a, a, a comment in the chat here um, from Ufua Ame who says, I feel that if you were always a natural leader, even in school or at other activities, that you don't need to hit a certain year mark to be thought of as a thought leader because you'll naturally be noticed. And I wanted to highlight this because this is absolutely something that I used to believe hard, right? Like, so when I was in high school, I wanted to be a team captain. I was on the rowing team and I wanted to be a team captain because I wanted people to like, to like look to me for answers or to get to like lead, right? And the day that we did, that we voted on team captains, I had no idea that you had to nominate yourself because I thought if people want you to be the captain and they're going to vote for you, then they're going to nominate, right? So I'm sitting there and I'm all excited because I want to be team captain and I cannot wait to see how many votes I get. And I didn't get a single vote because I didn't nominate myself. So what I, what I want you to pull from this is the idea that you are going to be naturally noticed if you are a leader, you're not wrong. Like my husband is one of these people. My, my younger sister is one of these people who will walk into a room and I'm telling you people just, they gravitate towards them, right? And we've all met them before where you meet somebody and you're like, oh, that person's in charge. Oh, that person knows what's going on. People follow that person. That is not the only way to be a leader. So learn from my mistakes, learn from what I have, you know, spent 36 years on this planet understanding. You can nominate yourself. You can be that person. You don't have to be naturally thought of. You don't have to wait for it to happen organically. You can step up and say, I want to be a thought leader. I want to be a team captain. And sometimes just saying it is enough for people to then like kind of reframe and think of you in a different light and be like, oh, I didn't realize that was something they wanted. But again, don't feel like just because you're not naturally, like organically recognized as this through no fault or no participation or no action on your own behalf, it doesn't, it's not the only way to be a leader. All right. That was my piece. I'll be quiet now. But Dr. Okay. Rose, what do you think? What do you think about this idea of that natural leadership? I absolutely concur. Again, the thought leadership is a continuum. There's many ways and places for you to find your safe space for thought leadership. Thought leadership does and should be in a safe space, a safe area. And sometimes you just being there, you having your voice is creating a safe space, not just for yourself, but for other people. And so that that's huge. I completely, um, I really like that story, but I'm sorry that you experienced that, but I think that that is very powerful. Well, you know, let's, let's, let's be real on the continuum of things you could experience, not the worst, right? It's not the worst thing ever. Um, but yeah, you know, it really does help you to kind of understand that this, you, you have more power in the situation than you think you do, right? We don't have to be passive. We don't have to wait and see if these things are going to happen. Correct. Again, you ask yourself, you know, the hope question, you know, do you have something to share, you know, if we were, you know, you ask yourself, you know, is there a community of people are you organizing towards making it better? And then, you know, are you eager to learn about this and eager to, to have other people to build community about it? I think that's a part of it. And there's just different ways to do it. Um, you know, there's different also levels and not all thought leadership necessarily is the same. There's again, different ways to, to approach and I think that's, I think that's okay. I think we don't want this to be something like a pie in the sky, you know, and, and it all starts out with, you know, saying thought leadership to highlight takes space, right? It takes that mm -hmm. strategy, it takes tactics, right? And, and it takes, you know, a, an approach 
that will really create, you know, further, ex, you know, exploration and, and further movement in whatever field, area, or, yeah, topic that you're excited about. Okay. Um, we had a lot of people that wrote in, you know, like what positions they held or what industries they were part of and wanted to know how, like, what should be their first step to be a thought leader? Um, so let's, let's try and find like, if, is, if there's one actionable tip that people can take from this, what should their first step be? You know, I, again, the first step is hope. Asking themselves, do you have something that you want to share? And understanding where does it come from? And is it, is it coming from, you know, experience or is it coming from a level of expertise? Can you help someone through whatever sort of thought leadership position that you're inclined to? And then, oh, you know, who, who is this organized around? And how can you start creating a community of belonging and relevance? Yeah. And the P would be for, you know, connecting to the people. How can you connect people to this? Whether it's, are you going to be someone else's team me or are you going to be your own team me? Mm -hmm. And then what, what do you need to do to learn and to educate yourself more on this, to educate others? Because, you know, we have now reached a new age in, in academia and understanding of what education is. It's, we, it's still kind of like it's what it's been for millennia, you know, you, you know, high school, college, but we're moving into an era where we all are going to be lifelong learners. Mm -hmm. And this can be your way to embark on your lifelong learning journey. What better way to pick a university than the university of you? <laughs> Yes. And you use this to really just further enhance your dreams and to inspire others. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Well, and I'm loving this idea that, you know, you're right. We are part of that generation that's going to be continuously learning and that can look like going back to school and getting more certificates. And, you know, there's a, a thousand and one ways to, to continue on that journey. But I like, I like the idea of, of kind of taking it away from the, uh, maybe the, the kind of like super impressive or super intimidating idea that it has to be so formal and, you know, reaffirm the fact that like, it's really just about learning something new for yourself and then sharing that with other people that might not already know this thing, you know, like it can be a, a, something as simple as like hot keys in zoom, like here, y'all want your thing from today. When you are in zoom, if you press and hold the space bar, Let's all do it. <laughs> It'll mute you and unmute you. I'm telling you, it's awesome, but this is something stupid that you learn. And if, if nothing else, you have learned one thing today, but it kind of also further underlines that idea that like everybody you meet knows something you don't, everybody. And I'm loving how many of these, how many of your acronyms have, um, you know, have that, that inclusion or that, you know, kind of element of sharing, right? It's it's about it's about sharing something that you know. It does not have to be huge. It can be small. That's okay. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. That it is because it's a continuum. It's a spectrum. And we mm -hmm. can start, we can, you know, approach it in so many different ways. It should though be tailored to who you are. Love that. Okay. So this person had written in saying that they are in a mid-level role, but they want to think of some ways that they can enhance their thought leadership and their presence when they're not at the, at the decision-making table. So let's talk about what this looks like, um, you know, when it is, if you are, if you're not in a position to be making the rules, but you want to be moving up to that, that role at some point. Absolutely. So I like that question because it also highlights kind of what, you know, I would like to hit home today. I would like to hit home that even if you are not in the decision-making tables, you still are a decision-maker. 
and you do not want to look at yourself in any lesser way. <laughs> and so, you, you know, there's, you know, you may have seen these have been going around, you know, the internet, you know, what are the things you can control? You know, what are the things you can influence? What are the things uh, that, you know, you, you can't. And so, um, not being at that table, may not you may not be sitting at the decision making table but guess what you might have what i said a smile around you you might have a an ally an angel or some sort of ace in your pocket or you might have you know that you know s for someone who's championing for you and so to get your thoughts across so know who those people are you know there are a lot of people out there myself including who look for people who have ideas and say, you know what, the world needs to hear about that, you know? And so look for those type of people who that's their purpose, their passion, and, and that's their path, right? So if you don't start, people may not even know to really sort of organize around you or to give you these opportunities. But I tell you what, you will shine if you start understanding what it is you can control and it will be noticed. And again, those benefits we talked about, those marketable skills, the, the interpersonal skills, the intrapersonal skills, and the suprapersonal skills will really come in hand for you in any type of job market. Okay. Now, okay, once, once we've started kind of demonstrating our thought leadership, how can we tell if this is successful? How can we tell if people are getting the impression of us that we're going for, or if it's being seen, you know, kind of in an aggregate light? I have known plenty of people that have great ideas or have, you know, elevated the great ideas of others from time to time, but I don't maybe necessarily think of them as thought leaders. So let's talk about this. Like if we are talking about success as people recognizing us as a thought leader, how can you tell if that's working? That is a good question, but it ultimately depends, you know, how are we measuring success, right? The measurement of the form of success will really ultimately determine the function. So for every measurement of success, we're implying you got a goal there. And for goals, you, you might've heard about the SMART goals. I did not make this up. That's a specific goal. Is it, you know, how specific, right? Are you looking to have a goal? Is it measurable, right? Um, is it achievable? Is it relevant? And is it time focused, right? So these are things that you would want to look to, to see, are you having success? Because success will ultimately depend upon your measurement of success. I think that's key. I want to like hold some space here for what you just said. Like think of it in terms of how you determine success. How are you defining it? And what sort of smart goals are you surrounding your thought leadership with? Yeah. All right. So one of the things that you had touched on earlier was that we don't need to be an expert in the field to be able to, to, uh, you know, demonstrate thought leadership. Um, one of the things that I thought of when we first, like when you first mentioned this was um, a girlfriend of mine who is, she, she's amazing. I knew her in high school and her work, like her career trajectory has just been unbelievable the last several years. And I follow her on Facebook and I follow her on Instagram and I follow her on LinkedIn. And one of the things that I love seeing from her is that not only does she share her own, you know, her own ideas or her own experiences within her field, but she also shares the ideas and work of others within her field. You know, even if it's not her idea and she's not taking credit for it, you know, she'll like share an article that she read somewhere or whatever. But this is one of the ways that I started understanding that thought leadership doesn't necessarily mean being the person with all the ideas, right? So how do you feel about this? Like if you, do you think that we have to be experts or do you think we have to know experts to, to be thought of as, as, as thought leaders? I don't think you have to be experts per se, but I do think you should have experience. You can have both. And it's something that you should be eager to learn more about. And as that happens, you know, we talked about some of the, the 10 C's, you know, the intrapersonal marketable skills. 
And one of those creates more confidence. Combine that then with independence. But it's like you have a clarity of an idea so that you can rely on what it is that you're learning to inform yourself going forward. So it means that you are able to look at these things and, you know, create an informed opinion and you can be part of someone's team meet. You can be part of highlighting because it resonates with you and you know, hey, I have a platform. So you're making yourself an ally. You're amplifying, even if you don't know the person in person. So, or yeah. You yes. have to know her, but um, yeah. Yeah, lucky enough to to have like, you know, gone to high school with somebody. It's nothing, there's nothing like saying I used to eat chicken, uh, chicken nuggets across from you in the lunch table to like really help you put that perspective on like, oh wow, she is very impressive. Maybe I could be impressive someday, even though I ate chicken nuggets at the same lunch table with this person. So I think that's wonderful. We did get a question from the audience that I wanted to try and get to um, because we only have about five minutes left in today's session. Um, This person had written in today saying, sometimes the pieces are there for thought leadership, but there can be barriers and obstacles. Could you discuss how ways that we could overcome or deal with obstacles that might honestly be deal breakers that would prevent us from sharing these ideas? Um, so I think this is a really interesting question. In, in your experience, have you run into, you know, barriers or obstacles to doing this? What did they look like and how did you overcome them? That, that is a really good point. And yes, you know, thought leadership, again, it's a stewardship of your own mind. It's a s- stewardship of your own life, as it were. And so, you know, if you have an experience, you get an idea that you think is valuable, that's worthwhile, even if you do, you know, the ABCDs, you know, you, you have an analytical approach, you, you really are becoming more strategic as you're going along. Even if you do that, even if you give space to it, you're going to have some gaps. And in my life, for example, I was really interested in attending a certain school, a certain medical school. But guess what? I didn't speak the language (laughs) and it meant that I had to learn the language. And so that was again before, you know, we had, you know, the the great internet, what it is today. So it was very iterative and included lots of uh, big books and journals and and asking a lot of people and not feeling uh, very comfortable sometimes because, you know, you're making mistakes or, you know, and so all that to say, it's a learning journey you will, (laughs) it's not if, you will have a learning curve. Consider that fortunate because it's a path, because in every challenge there, and and, and I'm not being twee when I'm saying it, it is an opportunity in there to do something for someone somewhere in some way. And don't make little of that. And there are some things I, I'm thinking about your other question. Another part of your question was, are there ever any things that will prevent you? And I can think of some, and, and I'm thinking about, you know, there's a psychologist, you know, and he, he created something called Maslow's uh, Hierarchy of Needs. And these describe in succession different needs starting at the bottom which is a for air you know b you know making sure that you have access to resources and employment and c then that one is the the love c for caring that you have enough care and and compassion and people in your life you know that's a need and then the last one is d is deservingness i call it that deservingness which really sort of expands the whole concept of Mm self-actualization, how to become your best self. Now, if we are looking at the first one for air, for water, for, for shelter, if we are struggling in that first one, we can all agree there could be many, many obstacles to really demonstrate perhaps a thought leadership, but, Even thought leadership can help someone get from A to B, 
to that next part where you can have you know access to resources and you can have you know later on you know compassion and 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 become your best self so don't let an obstacle shy you away if you know that what you have if you have hope and you have something to share do not let an obstacle try to find people in that group in that space to help you and there are people out there believe it or not who do want to do that so be open for that but it's a very good question and you know sometimes it doesn't come in a certain time and mm -hmm. we have to be mindful of that. It may not come in the way, in the time, or in the space that we may hope it to come, but that doesn't diminish its value. Yes. Oh, it, one of the biggest, uh, the, the biggest things that I try and remember a lot in my life is that the picture in our head of how it was supposed to be is what's messing you up. Right. If you're able to to divorce the thing, yeah. the you know the event or the accomplishment or whatever from how it's supposed to look, you can you can eliminate a lot of like self doubt and a lot of of frustration with how things are turning out. Like truly, it it is incredibly helpful. Very hard to do, obviously. Like nothing nothing worth doing is, but um, I think that that is one of the absolutely something people should really listen and you know what, what you've been saying this whole time you know think about it not just in the way that you think it should happen or you went like when you want it to happen but think about it in terms of like once it's actually occurred I think that's that's a really great way to look at it um, we are at time today so I do want to make sure we stay on time um you know respect everybody's calendars but um Dr. Rose, thank you so much. It's been wonderful to spend the last hour with you. I'm so, so happy um, that we got to share your expertise with our audience today. Um, is there, I'm gonna share a link that you had shared with us. I've been sharing it throughout the event, um, but can you tell people what this link is for? Absolutely. You know, I'm from the University Network um, and I believe our fearless leader, uh, president and the founder is on the call as well. But we are an advocate for youth, first and foremost. And our short name is TUN, the University Network, rhymes with fun. We reach about 10 to 12 million students, their families and educators and employers monthly across global platforms. And so we're an advocate for youth. We support thought leadership across academic, career, and personal milestones. And we also have free resources that we can connect you with, whether it's the $5.2 billion in the scholarships we have, or even some of the discount tools for students. Additionally, we can also support nonprofits. And we have right now openings and opportunities for thought leaders to apply. You know, you're extensive and and your diverse of wisdom or knowledge, if you have something that can help students, we would love to hear from you. And so you have that link from Meg there. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Dr. Rose. Uh, huge thank you to our audience members as well. Y'all came hard with some great questions, um, both in the registration process as well as today. So thank you all, um, not only for joining us today, but also for, for making today's event as fun and interactive as possible. Now, um, if you are a frequent flyer with PowerFly, maybe this is your 50th event, but 500th, thank you so much for coming back. I love seeing all of the returning uh, you know, familiar faces, familiar um, uh, uh, Zoom uh, handles, all of that stuff, we love to see it. If this was your first event with PowerFly, thank you so much for joining. We have been just overjoyed to get to meet you today, and we hope that we get to see you again soon on another future event. Have a lovely rest of your Monday, y'all. Safe, happy, healthy, and we will be back with more great programming later on. Bye. Bye, guys.